ओम सहना वु सहना पुनक्तु सह वीर करवा वह तेजस्वीनावधी तमस्तु माँ विद्विषा वह ओम शांति 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 हरि ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओम वसुदेव वसुत देव कंसचाणूरमर्दन देवकी परमानंदम कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु Okay, so we were we are on verse seven, and we had started reading Swami Ji's commentary. We just read about three paragraphs, so we'll continue with that. But just to remind where we are, I'm sorry. We are fourteen. Okay, page fourteen. Uh, whoever has the book, and if if all the new people, if they are in San Diego, and if they want me to pick up the book. for them from chinma mission i can pick it up for them and then we can figure out how to get it to you we can talk about it then and on the class so chapter i mean sorry chapter 8 verse 7 a uh, 6 and 7 what krishna bhagwan was trying to say that uh, last couple of verses that if you remember me firstly he said that if you remember me at the time of death you will reach the highest you get the moksha and then he was talking about the science behind it the what does it actually mean and basically the idea is that whatever is your strongest thought and desire which will come out whatever you have done all your life uska jo sar hai wo aa jayega aage and according to that you will have a next life so if somebody has you know brahman as at the core of their life then that's what they will get and otherwise you will go according to your own thoughts so there was we discuss all the science behind it and then in verse 7 krishna bhagwan gave the remedy that to achieve that goal to get the highest what how you should live and therefore he said therefore at all times remember me and fight with mind and intellect fixed or absorbed in me you shall doubtless come to me alone उन्होंने एक प्रॉमिस दिया अर्जुन को देर आर सम वर्सेज इन भगवद गीता आई कॉल इट प्रॉमिस बाय लॉर्ड कृष्णा विच इज अ वेरी वेरी बिग थिंग एंड सो वॉट डज इट एक्चुअली मीन बींग एब्जॉर्ब इन इट बिकॉज देर कड बी अूज कन्फ्यूजन इन पीपल्स माइंड दैट इफ आई हैव टू वर्क गो आउट इन द वर्ल्ड और एट होम आई हैव टू डू ऑल दीज ड्यूटीज हाउ कैन आई रिमेंबर गॉड बिकॉज यू माई थिंक गॉड का रिमेंबरेंस मीन यू हैव टू सिट इन मेडिटेशन you have to focus or you have to do some bhajan or you have to do some puja and re- rest of the time how can i remember god that means misunderstanding he's clearing that how to do your duties while remembering god what does it actually mean so that's what we discussed in detail already and as we go with swami ji's commentary is going to get open up more and more so i think we will get a lot of tips so with that uh who's uh Meena ji is back. <laughs> so Meena ji would you like to read? It is the fourth paragraph. It reminds us that's the Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. It, it reminds us of Don Quix Quixote and his old horse charging against windmills and lampposts to fight the imaginary demon who had imprisoned and kept his lady love. in bondage when we read some commentaries wherein this stanza is invoked to declare that every student of the gita must fight all intelligent readers understand that gita is primarily an advice to arjuna in a given specific situation wherein he gets ready to run away from a field of action in which he is called upon to act to win The poet philosopher Vyasa certainly employs here a pun on the word fight. It applies to Arjuna as a direct advice, and to all the generations of the Gita students as an indirect instruction to fight the battle of their own lives. So there are a couple of things in this. Uh, sorry, the paragraph finished. Yeah, yeah. It's huh, finished. Huh. So there are a couple of things in this paragraph. Firstly, he's you know. 
Swami Ji is with this story is telling you that hey, try to understand the real meaning of what he's, they are saying over here. Because earlier what we read last time that constantly remember me if you take it wrong it can be a disaster. Because <laughs> people will try to just do some puja, some something. They, I have to go work also and then trying to juggle these two things all the time and get frustrated and all that and they, half of them just give up. So, so that's one point. And the uh, second thing that we had discussed it already that if, if Krishna Bhagavan is telling Arjun to fight, it's saying because he was a soldier. So for us, it's like go do your duty. And then the other you know, symbolism over here is in some ways everybody is, is fighting in their life in a sense. We, are, we all feel like a battleground once in a while. You know, our life, there are so many things are thrown at us and, you know, and all that. So you can take it whichever way you want. But idea is that whatever your main duties are, go ahead and do that. Not run away from it. No religion can continue. Sorry, you had Samirji, you had a question? You have to unmute, please. Yeah, not a question, but a comment. Mm -hmm. uh, since we mentioned that Arjuna uh, was under Moha, that's why Krishna said. Under what? I'm sorry? Pardon? What I'm sorry, can you repeat last line that you said? Yeah, since Arjun, mm -hmm. Krishna is advising Arjun, and mm -hmm. Arjun's specific case is that he has been overtaken by Moha. Right. That's why Krishna is saying to get rid of her Moha. In your given situation, which is a Kurukshetra, mm -hmm. uh, you need to fight. Uh, I think we all are Arjun, and just like in his case, it was fighting in the battlefield. In our case, it could be growth, it could be matsar, it could be anything that we come across and we need to fight. Yeah, and true. we find our own, own way, just mm -hmm. like Krishna is saying how to fight with all, uh, all teachings in Gita, all Gran Yoga, Karma Yoga, Bhakti Yoga combined. And we have to find our own way. Yes. That's Absolutely. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Minaji, continue. No religion can continuously serve the society unless it gives its faithful followers specific instructions and guidance on how best to live their day-to-day -day life. Here is an instruction which is at once applicable in the secular fields of living and in the divine realms of life. Here is a simple instruction by which not only the standard of living could be raised, but also the standard of life could be divinized. So, so here he's telling you actually this one and the next verse. Next verse is going to focus more on, you know, when we sit in meditation, what we should be doing. Both ways, Krishna Bhagwan is giving a simple instruction be absorbed in that Brahman, whether you're working outside or you're sitting in meditation. And he's just saying that it, this is, not, you know, we are all worried about constantly, especially in our younger days, you know, coming for increasing our standard of living. But like Swami used to always say that if you, if you increase your standard of life, standard of living all, already comes under that, you know. So it is, this is a much, much higher goal. So sometimes people will start studying Gita for some other smaller purposes, you know, like or time management, you know, or some company will do some how to manage people and all that. But it is actually, you can get much higher things and these other small things just come as a bonus. <laughs> you know, the goal is very high over here. Yeah. Hmm. There are many who suspect that this method of splitting the mind between religion and life is detrimental to true success in either of them. This, in fact, is a thoughtless argument. Hardly ever is man's mind totally invested where his hands function. Ordinarily, a major portion of the mind all the time wanders into the jungles of dreadful fears or into the caves of jealousies or into the deserts of imaginary possibilities of failures. Instead of, the, the, instead of thus wasting 
the total mental energy and dynamism, Krishna advises us that a truly successful man striving to achieve the highest, both in the outer world of plurality and in the realms within, should rest his mind at the gracious and peaceful feet of the truth. He can then pour out the entire wealth of his capacities into the work in his hand and thereby assure for himself the highest laurels both here and in the hereafter. So um, very, very important thing he said and uh, this is one very major aspect of the Karma Yoga that he has discussed in, in chapter 3. Um, and in, even in chapter 2, there's even the karma and all that. All it's a little That if somebody says, hey, how can I remember God and also do my work? So he's reminding that most of us do that. When we are doing, we are a major portion of our mind at all time wanders in the jungles of dreadful fears. Ab ye ho jayega to kya hoga? Or in the past, mein kuch garbar hua, or future mein imaginary possibilities. And he's just saying we waste so much mental energy. This is a whole, you know, secret of what is karma yoga is that you focus on what you're doing. While doing the work, don't think about past and future. future. Focus on and, and then all, dedicate it to Bhagwan. Offer it to Bhagwan and then do it. That's the main thing. And that's what he's trying to say. That waste we waste And then he, next paragraph and all, he will, he will tell you that when you... Uh, offer it to Bhagwan, dedicate it to Bhagwan, keep the Bhagwan as the center of your life, the benefits that's going to happen. You're not going to worry about the results. You're not, it's just like a parent will never do any harmful thing for their child. So if you dedicate, you'll always get good results. So, so many other things are in it. So the whole Karma Yoga is here. That's why. Hmm. In Hinduism, religion is not divorced from life. If they are separated, both of them will die away. They are as intimately connected as the head and the trunk. Separated from the other, neither can live. Even while living through the turmoils of existence, a true seeker must learn to keep his mind continuously upon the awareness of his real nature and the substratum of the world in one vast embrace of blissful home homogeneity homogeneity homo yeah homogeneity yeah. homogeneity mm. this is not difficult nor is it impracticable so he's just telling you that firstly he's telling you that both the lives you cannot say that they are two separate because somehow uh that's what we think if we if we don't study vedanta we don't understand this that's how we look at it right oh i have to go to the mandir i have to do this or i have to do this anushtan all that is great but rest of the time you have to be spiritual too otherwise it's not going to work or constantly work at it and then how he's saying that they're intimately connected like head and trunk you can't separate them they die they'll die without each other how how he strongly is telling you and then he's saying that this is not impractical and now he's going to give you some beautiful examples that we have discussed in the past also in other contexts but you will see when he talks about head and the trunk, that means every moment of your life. Because head and trunk cannot, cannot be separated. Cannot be separated anytime. Yes. True. So yeah. that's what he's talking so, about. So, you know, the example he's going to give about the actor, that is everybody will relate to it. And, you know, even other we talked about, you know, last class you missed. I don't know if you heard the uh, yeah, recording, but how the new mother, new mother has awareness of the baby. Yes. You know, I, I'm not even a new mother. I'm, I'm a grandma, right? Once in a while, he spends the night here with me. And believe me, in my whole night, I'm like aware of, if he thought I would chew, I would be like, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. so when you have that responsibility, you, you have that awareness, you know? Yeah. And the good example was of the matka that the, yeah. the that was very good. Yeah. And in a modern day, and how we drive, and we do other, yeah. you know, we are talking to people, maybe listening to music, but that awareness of driving is primary. You can't make a mistake yeah. on a road, right? So yeah. it, all those, so that means it can be done. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> An actor playing the part of a king in a drama can never completely forget that he has a wife and a child in his own house and the outskirts of the city, on the outskirts of the city. 
If he forgets his personal identity and acts as the king even outside the stage, he will immediately be segregated and moved into a lunatic asylum for the safety of the society. <laughs> He's efficient as the actor because he constantly remembers his own real identity. Similarly, even with continuous cognition of our divine nature, we can act in the world without any hindrance and thereby add a glow to our achievements and soften the reactions of any disappointments that we might meet within life's pilgrimage. Is, this is hard in the sense, you know, actor ka hum ko samaj mein aata hai, but we forget that we are also in some ways actors on this earth. <laughs> you know, we are playing different roles, but this is such a powerful example. You know, the reason the actor can act really good because he knows that actually mein usko kuch nahi hua hai. he can act as a beggar or he can act as a king or a sick person or a dying person does not matter. Jitna jada wo secure hoega, utni achi acting karega wo. Agar wo sach mooch usko laga, mere ko kuch ho raha hai, he won't be able to act. So such a powerful example. So hey, that hey, we are that Brahman. And nothing as bad has happened to us. All those things, whatever we have learned, the entire Vedanta comes under this. That if we remember that, how more, how much more relaxed we will be. True, yeah. Otherwise, we are like lunatics. Right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Absolutely. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, like, uh, experience bhi pata chalta hai, right? That's why they say, you know, if the older people are wiser, the grandma type, the teenager, you know, oh, my life is coming to an end, and the grandma will say, Kuch hua. <laughs> she has seen it all, <laughs> you know, yeah. so, so that's another aspect to it. But anyway, here they're talking of something much bigger, but if we can only, that's why the remembrance is that word is so important, right? That's true. Yeah, right. that you, if you remember who you are, the whole dynamism changes of your life. Oh, yeah, yeah. Your thought process changes completely. Oh. And that's what it is. Yeah. A truly educated man never forgets his education. It becomes part and parcel of his very nature. And every thought, word and action of, it, of his, he brings out the fragrance of his education. <clears throat> so too, the man of constant awareness will act in the world as a mastermind. All his actions soaked in self selflessness and his thoughts flavored with love and all his feelings matured in kindness. This is the secret with which the Vedic civilization enchanted the world of its time and completed the adoration of all later generations. My, my grandson just walked in. Oh. I think he's doing class. Okay, so um, th this is another beautiful example that again, that, that an educated man never forgets his education. So, uh, you know, how he, he conducts himself in the world, that he will always have that education behind him. He doesn't have to constantly walk around with his degree. <laughs> See what I'm saying? But that will never go away. Or if you know a language. You can stretch these examples of whatever you know, that's how you will behave in the rest of the world. Okay. A cultured man will behave like that. Uncultured man will behave in the way. You can't take that away from him. I think this is also even even more powerful example. That if you are, if you are soaked into that idea of Brahman, and that's what we are trying to do through these um, you know, chapters, it started from chapter 7 and it's going to continue until 12th chapter that, hey, who is Brahma? So as we learn deeper and deeper, we will have more remembrance. We, will, we, won't, we can't get away from it, it that anymore. And now, you know, after uh, the next verse, after two verses, the, the, the Kavi Puranam Wala Jo Hai, it will give you such po beautiful pointers who Brahman is. It will already start. It's very, very poetic, very beautiful so when we come to that. But this is a very good example of our education. Yeah. I guess as we go along, we do in our actions before we actually become that. Because our actions show. Because, you know, once we learn 
So we grasp some of it. I mean, at least we should try to grasp and put into action whatever we have learned. Yeah, so and if you act, I guess what you're saying is first we have to deliberately put in the action, right? Yeah, yeah. Put, yeah. and our thoughts also. So direct our thoughts so they become one with us. True. And so, you know, the people who have become established in that then you go back to the chapter two, you know, Lakshan of Sita Pragna. Hey, how do they behave once they have? That is true uh, person who is soaked in it. Then he, he's not bothered about anything. He moves about in the world. He's not avoiding anybody. He is always some in his mind. There are so many great characteristics. Fir sahaj mein hoga. But you are right in the beginning. Jaise bolte na, you fake it until you get it. Something like that there is some yeah. some uh, saying in english you you fake it until you make it sorry that's the same okay, yes yeah. yeah so in the <laughs> beginning we, we have to deliberately try to remember then i think in our in our um, study group you know we used to joke about it how do we remember so one of my friend told me you know she works on the computer all day she said i have put some kind of a little cartoon that comes every hour to remind me <laughs> you know <laughs> about God, you know, or I think in the the Muslims, the, the Panch Var Namaz Padna is exactly the same thing. That why do they do that? They're remembering God, you know. But if you remember a wrong God, then you might do wrong things. So that that points will come. But if you truly remember God, then that's what you will be soaked in. Or in our Shastras or whatever, they tell you to do Sandhya three times a day. Right? Morning, afternoon and evening. It's the same concept. Or, you know, like khate khane ke pehle bhagawan ko yaad karo. That is the simplest thing. Bola ki sandhya nahi bhi karega, kuch nahi khaega to zarur na. <laughs> so, uske pehle bhagawan ko yaad karo. Whichever way. But then, you know, remembering in the correct manner. Yes. That's the main thing. Like, that's what Nikhilanand ji stressed upon a lot. You know, your own idea of Bhagawan may be all twisted, but Shastras are telling you exactly how to remember him. <laughs> the moment we forgot this decadence of Hinduism started, even the greatest heroes like Arjuna become historical, historical creatures, psychologically shattered and intellectually incapacitated to meet the challenges of life. As a Hindu evangelist, Krishna is giving in the Gita the right direction to the current of the Hindu Renaissance at the time of Mahabharata. So this is also very significant. You know, Samir ji just pointed out about Arjun. Usko mo ho gaya. Mo isli ho gaya na. Wo bhul gaya ki mein kaun hoon. Because usne bhi shastra padhe te saare. You know, he was very uh, well versed in the Shastras and then the chapter one, he's quoting the Shastras and telling uh, Krishna Bhagavan, you know, why are, the war is so bad and this and that and I'll create, it will create so many problems. But when you forget, he said that the greatest hero like Arjuna became hysterical, psychologically shattered, intellectually incapacitated to meet the challenges of life. So, you know, you can really downfall much, much deeper if you don't have this kind of understanding of, of uh, you know, the world and God and what our relationship with him. So that means just the Shastra reading is not enough. No. That we have to apply, until we apply. Understand, firstly, reading, understand. understanding, then applying, and then you will see the results. That's, yeah, and that's where it happened. It's, I think the best example about that, very simple one, that is if you have a headache and you bring a Tylenol from the store and just keep it on your shelf and read all the instruction but never take it, your yeah. headache is not going to go away. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's it. It's, it's, bring the Shastras, you, you can that, quote it, yeah. you can recite it, you can do all kind of dhamal, but nothing is going to happen until you do it. True. When an individual has thus satisfied all reasonable calls of duty made by the society on him, he not only becomes a faithful member of the society, but also evolves culturally and until advanced, he comes to soar to the highest in his spiritual stature. Yeah, so... Yeah, because I got a little disturbed, my son came in because there's a little something going on. 
outside. Anyway, so um, with the when the satisfied with all reasonable calls are made by the society on him, he not only becomes faithful member. Of, yeah, so he's talking about that both ways. Remember, I told you that even in in uh, the three openers, it's coming that outside world, inside world, both are equally important. You know, so you cannot spirituality may you cannot ignore one over the other. You know, the people who take sannyasa and go in the guffa, that is their calling. That's a, we can't compare ourselves to that. No matter who you are, you know, whatever you have decided to do in your life, you got to fulfill that too, whatever you have taken upon. So both ways with, with this remembrance helps in both. That's what he's trying to say, internal and outside. And you will soar the highest spiritual nature too. This is not possible merely by putting on some marks on the forehead or by wearing the hair on the head in a particular fashion. So also, wearing a thread across the trunk is no guarantee for spiritual evolution. These physical paraphernalia can be useful only if we know how to make use of them. If I purchase a radio but live in a remote village, where there is no electricity, I will enjoy no music in my humble hut. By consulting a mirror, a blind man cannot know the beauty of his face. Okay. So we, this he gives such a beautiful example. <laughs> you know, that just because you have a radio but there's no electricity, you're not going to enjoy the music or a blind man. Even if he looks at in the mirror, you need both. You need the eye and the mirror both. That's what it is. And then... You know, these India may dhongi sadhu kitne sare, you know, because logo logo ko sadhu ka vesh dekke thoda sa reverence vagara jata hai, take advantage of that. Jo dhongi log hote hai. So you can be like what Chinmayananji used to say. Firstly, Bhagavad Gita also. He picked up Arjun to, to give the gyan. Arjun is just like us, what Samiji was saying. He represents us. Person who has a job, person who has a family, person who has all the daily problem. He did not take pick up some renunciate, you know, who's you know, or some swami or something to give this gyan. But he picked because he feels like all of us can completely benefit from it, and we can go to the highest level doing our duty. You know, that is uh, so so important. And the outside marks are don't have any meaning here because there are, there could be somebody even three piece suit working in downtown and could be self realized. You know, could be anyone. So the outside marks are just, and even if those those marks are there, if you don't even know the meaning, what's the you know people tilak lagalo, the new pen lo, or you don't know why you're doing it, then what's the point? So, so many good things are there here. Krishna is here quite clear when he says that, in the case of an individual who lives lives parallel to win righteous profits and constantly remembers the Lord while doing so, his mind and intellect get absorbed in me. Following the above, um, uh, five, and six, mean, five and six, five and six. Yeah, eight, eight chapter, five and six uh, verses, theory of, as you think, so you become, you shall come to me. When once the mental equipment get absorbed in the self, through the process of constant contemplation on the self with single pointed devotion. So this is the sar of it. That what does it mean constantly remembering, you know, mind and intellect absorbed in it. And, you know, that's the whole process. You know, he from chapter two on, everything is going to be a repetition of the same idea, but presented in a more different, different way. So it, we can soak into it and or you can go much deeper into it. Whole idea is as you think, so you become. If you... Brahman, if you think about Brahman, you will become Brahman. What does it mean by uh, thinking of Brahman? That you have to understand what Brahman is and be established in it. And from that vintage point, you work in the world. That's what the whole idea is. And then you will get... This is, this is also called single-pointed devotion. When people say, you know, Ananya Bhakti, what does it mean? That's what it means. You know, that just... Because I think for us, we study, we know, we kind of believe, but our 100% doubt abhi bhi gaya nahi. <laughs> right. No, it is there, yeah. Yeah. So, because we read the question arise and we have to go back and think and think, you know, or ask, ask your guru, 
that's the only and the way we behave in the world that's also tells us that we are not there yet you know kisi ne kuch bol diya kisi ne ye kiya how our ego rises so quickly uh, all all those things are part of it so until that completely goes away you know but at least you you will see that as we study bhagavad gita as we try to experiment with it we will, we will get better and better this is the whole thing any comment question or anybody want to add anything to this verse yeah samit ji yeah i think in the uh, verse 7 the arpitam word becomes very important how to remember him all the time and krishna says arpitam mana and buddhi dedicate your man and buddhi to me in every task you do mm-hmm. whatever worldly task those are no no reason not to do the worldly task but while you are doing it you dedicate arpit arpan kar do man and buddhi and he will guide you what to do the right right thing i think that's what he is trying to say yeah you can say that for sure and you know different ways you can if you are you know somebody is focused on karma yoga then we saw that offering it to god bhakti wale to pehle hi keh dete hain ki bhagwan ki marzi jo bhi mere sath ho raha hai right to again arpit ho gaya and if somebody is doing jnana yoga so they are telling you that it's a substratum of everything anyway so uske bina to tum kuch bhi nahi kar sakte ho to waise hi wo complete sharan mein hum unke so all three ways this arpit applies you are absolutely right. and those ways are here man and buddhi Mm-hmm. Man, man will be more but those are our two powerful equipment that we use all day even in our dream we are using it <laughs> we can't get away from it for a, for a short time it just shuts down when we are in deep sleep but how much havoc mind and intellect crea- create for us think about it hum log ko tabhi that's why we love the deep sleep cuz <laughs> mind and intellect chup ho gaya magar kisi ka pure hoega so uska to hamesha hi wo bliss mein rahega हम लोग को ढूंढना पड़ता है ब्लेस इन अ डीप स्लीप ओके इफ आई डोंट गेट स्लीप आई गो क्रेजी यू नो बट जो लोग यू नो जिनका अर्पित ऑलरेडी है फुल्ली उनको तो रिलैक्स ही है सारा टाइम दैट्स वाई दे नीड लेस स्लीप ऑल्सो आई हर्ड द सम ऑफ द महात्मा ओनली स्लीप लाइक टू थ्री आवर्स एंड दे डोंट इवन लुक टायर्ड most of the time when you see them they are the architecture did that he exactly at mm. 2 3 o'clock just writing letters answering because right. he answered every letter and he would sit and write because of they have this you know arpit yes. buddhi like yes. he's talking about is totally relaxed yes mm. any other comment everybody okay with this so we can go to the next one then we have some time yeah so we'll go to verse 8 abhyas yoga yuktena chetasana nyagamina paramam purusham divyam yati parthanu chintayan abhyas yoga yuktena three words are there and the meaning is made stead steadfast by the method of habitual meditation abhyas yog means constant bhagwan ne wo abhyas ka pura chapter 6 mein diya tha when arjun asked that hey, my mind is like a powerful wind like a hurricane that came to <laughs> you know i can't control it it's like a hurricane and you're telling me that sit and meditate how can i do it so he said vairagya and abhyas two things he said so abhyas is very powerful and they both are kind of purak of each other once you learn what brahman is and when you have apne aap hoga abhyas aur abhyas se vairagya so we do, we did the whole thing so that jo abhyas se yukt ho as a mind and intellect okay which are habitual meditation chetasa with the mind no is not anyagamina moving towards any other thing dusre cheezon mein nahi bhatakna paramam the supreme purusham purusha over here is talking about the god that brahman and and we have discussed this earlier today anil ji is not here um that you know prakriti or purusha isliye unko purush ka gaya that talk it's pointing towards that brahman divyam resplendent you know divine yati goes 
Parth is Arjuna's name. Anuchintayan. This is also a very powerful word, meditating. And we'll see as we open it up more. So, first Bhagwan said that you remember me while performing action. Right? That's what we did. And then how Nikhilanandji was explaining this verse. And then Gurudev is also going to explain about, you know, death of the ego and all that. He's saying that we should also find some time, you know, to where we just focus our attention on, on the remembrance. And you can call it, some people may call it puja, some people call it, you know, meditation, whatever your passion is, how you connect to God. But we should take out that time where 100% attention is, is on that remembrance. And when you're not doing any other thing, it could be 20 minutes, half an hour. And if you have a lot of time, maybe an hour, whatever suits you. Okay. So this is what... And, how here there are a couple of words there let's look at it abhyas and anuchintayam these are the very important words so so what kind of mind mind should, that is constantly thinking about me and jo abhyas is a yoga yuktena mind a mind which is endowed with endowed with the quality of abhyas just jo mind jo abhyas karna janta ho achhe se and abhyas is practice, constant practice. Repeating is something is called abhyas. So how we have seen that in the beginning, we might have to repeat mechanically. Suppose if we don't have developed the bhav yet, okay, start mechanically, even the, something better than nothing. But then you have to add that feeling in it. You know, and how from where the feeling comes, our teacher used to always say, when you are uh, with somebody, uh, constantly then you become get the feeling so this is what they bhagwan ki katha suno bhagwan ka ye suno because you are trying to develop that love you know it's like it's western world mein to kutte ke sath rehte hain to kitna prem ho jata hai kutte se <laughs> because you are with the dog it's something like that that you have to be with it constantly practicing and with that the bhav will also increase so increase put the bhav in it It'll be more powerful. And then we we have to, just like Bhagwan gave the technique, we have to repeat these experiences of this bhaavala with the technique of memory. You know, so Bhagwan has all equipment we have given mind and intellect mein, that we are able to do that. So recalling these good memories, and he was, Nikhilanandji pointed out that whoever has done the Ishavasi Upanishad, there is a beautiful mantra in there which tells you that at the time of death, may I remember all the good experiences and thoughts that or understanding that I have done, all the good ones. Why? Because, um, and it says in the mantra that may I remember it again and again at the time of death so that, you know, uh, this will help me in my next, next journey. Remember Bhagwan said that whatever your thoughts are at the end, So for any, if you have own exclusive thought of Bhagwan, then you will get the moksha. So um, what we have to do is we, are, we have to train our mind with this practice. Constantly repeating Bhagwan's um, thinking of form or name or nature of Bhagwan, you know, in that sadhana that we are talking about, which we take the extra time out to just to do that, to reinforce these things. So, and then what he was trying to say is, Nikhil Ananji, that train your mind in such a manner that it becomes equipped with the power of abhyas. Okay. So what is this abhyas? So he was reminding us that there is no sport or singers. Hote hain. You know, today Meena Ji is not here. Sorry, Meera Ji is not here. Meena Ji is here. Meera Ji sings, right? So if you ask singer of Gar, his main power is abhyas. Riyaz, which is called Riyaz. सुबह सुबह उठ के शुरू हो जाएंगे वो लोग घंटों एंड इवन स्पोर्ट्स में कितना प्रैक्टिस करते हैं कितना बिफोर दे डू द गेम दैट्स ऑल दे आर डूइंग कांस्टेंटली एंड देन दे गेट सो गुड एट इट बिकॉज़ दे आर सो वेल इक्विप्ड इन दैट अभ्यास हम लोग को थोड़ा अभ्यास करने में मुश्किल होती है यू नो बट इफ समबडी कैन गेट दैट नैक ऑफ अभ्यास दे गॉट इट ऑलरेडी बिकॉज़ अभ्यास विल लीड यू देयर so then he, how he was saying that once that abhyas becomes strong in you, then things happen without effort literally. Sahaj mein hone lagta hai ekdam kaam. You know, kisi ne physical abhyas baut kiya hua ho. Usko ki physical kaam bolo, do minute mein kar dega ho. Kuch uthana ho, kuch karna ho. Hum log 
उसकी हालत खराब हो जाएगी बिकॉज वी वी डोंट हैव अभ्यास इन इट बट इट्स और कुकिंग फॉर वेमेन यू नो और हु एवर लव्स कुकिंग समबडी हैज डन डे इन एंड डे आउट टू टेल हिम टू डू हिल टू फिनिश इन फाइव मिनट्स अदर पीपल माइट बी सिटिंग देयर फॉर हाफ एन आवर ट्राइंग टू फिगर आउट व्हाट टू डू सो इन द वर्ल्डली सेंस आल्सो वी नो व्हाट अभ्यास कैन डू एंड देन ही यू नो निखिला नंद जी वाज टॉकिंग अबाउट हिज ओन एक्सपीरियंस ही सेड दैट यू नो व्हेन दे डू दैट कोर्स टू बिकम द आचार्य फॉर थ्री इयर्स ही सेइंग दैट एवरी डे दे हैव टू चैंट सर्टेन थिंग्स चैप्टर 15 खाने के टाइम पे दे डू इट द होल चैप्टर 15 अपुरुष सुक्तम और यू नो दैट थ्री ओपनिशद आल्सो इट सीम्स दैट दे डू अ लॉट ओवर देयर आई डिडंट नो दैट विष्णु सहस्त्र नाम एंड ऑल दे वो इतनी बार रिपीट किया इतनी बार रिपीट होता है कि फिर सडनली व्हेन यू सिट कुछ एफर्ट नहीं करना पड़ता अपने आप निकलने लगता है उसे यू नो लाइक अ लॉट ऑफ अस हैव हनुमान चालीसा मेमोराइज फ्रॉम द नॉर्थ यू नो हम बचपन में हमारे पेरेंट्स ने हमको बोला करो करो कर सुन सुन के कर करके उसमें चालीस है लेकिन हम लोग सोचते नहीं है कि मेरे से याद है या नहीं एक बुरु बोरा तो अपने आप दूसरा आता जाता है दैट्स कॉल अभ्यास सो यू नो इट्स देयर बट वी डोंट थिंक अबाउट इट सो इस थिंक सिमिलरली वेन वी हैव द अभ्यास ऑफ रिमेंबरिंग गॉड थिंकिंग अबाउट गॉड देन even at the time of death or something we are unconscious or some accidentally we die something automatically will come because abhyas kiya hua hai okay so he was just telling you so and then another way he put it that we understand this worldly language that we are tuned to it that abhyas we are tuned to it and he he gave a example of a missile you know like a targeted missile jaise locked hoti hai na ki <laughs> he was all the puranic stories are there also and now we have this technology now again it came about it was there before also you know fix on a target and send the missile is going to chase it until it gets it means is locked on the target same way saying that if your mind and intellect is locked in that bhagwan's target if subconsciously it's there you know that it was going to just come you don't need to make any effort That's what the whole idea is. You know, we हम लोग ऐसे बोलते हैं वो सोचना पड़ेगा ये सब कुछ करने की जरूरत नहीं है because if you have done this अभ्यास so that's what he was saying. Um, and then the word अन्य कामी ना over here is also very important. You know, the mind that is not going anywhere else, single pointed focus means at the at a very core of it, you understand that भगवान and ब्रह्मन so deeply. nobody can shake your that belief you know like sometimes you know if agar kachcha hota hai na ye zara sa kuch idhar udhar suna humne oh is god really there or if he is there then why is he sending the hurricane god knows people might have all kinds of ideas in their head you know means your whole faith start shaking no single pointed and then the word anuchintayan the one who constantly thinking and meditating on that supreme that's what it means then what will happen that is given over here because it says paras paramam purusham divyam he attained that param purushad which is divyam that's what it is it's very simple psychological theory you know sadhana idea is that you know we have already discussed is that as we think so we become so if if you think about god you know with that kind of bhav with that kind of understanding with that kind of belief with that kind of shraddha then nothing can shake it then you become god and then <laughs> nikhilanand ji even said it one thing further he's saying why because you are actually that only <laughs> we forget <laughs> you know jo log duality mein hote hai na unko ye bilkul acha nahi lagta ye statement how can i be god but you know, we know in vedanta what they're talking about at the essence we are we are god Uh, so and then here he is talking about that purusham paramam purusham is divyam which is divine and then you are, that you attain by anuchintayan and uh, again what uh, tejomaya nand ji sorry uh, nikhila nand ji brought out very important point that this uh, isko bola hai anuchintayan aur pichle wale verse mein tha anusmaran so word anu and there are two different swamis who gave two different meaning and both are very important you know our chinmayanand ji gave the the thing that continuous flow of thought is called anuchintayan and w- what he is saying over here is anu also means understanding that we have had before 
जो पहले जब जो हमने जब समझा है उसके हिसाब से चिंतन करो तुम तो द पॉइंट ही वॉज ऑन मेक इज दैट द सुप्रीम ट्रूथ दैट यू लर्न फ्रॉम स्क्रिप्चर्स शास्त्र आचार्य उपदेश मीनिंग जो तुमको आचार्य ने उपदेश दिया फ्रॉम द शास्त्र उसके हिसाब से तुम रिमेंबर करो यू नो बेस्ड ऑन द टीचिंग ऑफ दीज स्क्रिप्चर्स फ्रॉम द टीचर बिकॉज इफ यू थिंक ऑफ योर ओन आइडिया अबाउट गॉड विच इज नॉट बैक्ड बाय द शास्त्र एंड ऑल दैट देन it one won't work he saying that some people will say oh i remember god all the time but what kind of god are you remembering he say he may be thinking of some god sitting with a big beard with a danda in his hand and giving everybody punishment you know god knows alag alag idea hote hai logon ki aur koi sochega ki yahi bhagwan hai bas baaki to kuch hai nahi kisi ek insaan ko le lenge or something like that or koi jagah ko le lenge so you should think of god not your own idea but what you have learned from the wise people so because the reason he was saying that he was saying that god is such a word these days that what's the time okay i have some time god is such a word that everybody uses this word loosely ki koi believer non believer nastik astik sabhi use karte hain hum log kitna casually bolte hain oh god or something like that you know god word has become very loose these days so that's why he was saying that and some people might think that god is at a particular place only you know the bhagwan kahan hai to bola wahan ek ghanta lagta hai jaane mein jao wahan par wahan par hai bhagwan you know it's different different ideas that he was just giving some and we we have heard of these kind of thing that that uh, oh but can i interrupt you here yeah uh it is the eighth shloka abhyas yoga yukte na रिच मी yeah those are that's the word meaning and we are going in detail that what does that anuchintaya mean what does that puramam purusham divyam means if, and if i go to if i if i i actually am meet, meeting today the head of this uh, uh this uh, uh uh this mission you know you, you're talking so if if what i have read is that in this verse lord krishna stresses the importance of remembering him that is if you go back to shivism that shows that merging of consciousness into super consciousness that is the shlok 8 of this chapter contemplating and then he says one's memory of krishna is revived by chanting the maha mantra hare krishna by this practice of chanting and hearing the sound vibration of the supreme lord one's ear tongue mind are engaged this mystic meditation is very easy to practice and it helps one attain the supreme lord purusham puru my uh, pronunciation is not correct purusham paramam devyam yes mm-hmm. means enjoyer all the living entities belong to the marginal energy of the supreme lord they are in material contamination they think themselves enjoyers but they are not supreme enjoyer here it is clearly stated that supreme enjoyer is supreme personality of godhead in, in his different manifestations and plenary expansions as narayana vasudeva etc i can keep on that yeah i know i think you are reading it from prabhu pad ji's book am i correct yes yeah, yes yeah, right. so i have that book also so this is what it is you can call it krishna you can call it shiva you can call it whoever you want to you can make your give your own name that does not matter the principle is that matter so in hare krishna obviously they look yes. at uh, lord krishna and here in bhagavad gita we do it too but no, Kr- no, krishna I, if we think I, let just, me just let me yeah two two lines okay sure my point is this thing that what i am I'm not authority in field i'm trying to understand it is that the ultimate goal is there is a verse in kashmiri i can't translate in in hindi or in english accurately 
that whatever you see outside is basically inside in you. If you contemplate on your inside and you dance with your inside, you achieve the supreme consciousness. That is the ultimate goal if I understood. True. So, so we have gone since you joined so late. We have discussed and we have done some couple of other Upanishads also. So okay. what you are trying to say, it's like ocean is, ocean is there, right? Now whether you, you worship the whole ocean or you take one drop and do, in the essence they are the same. Is, is that right? Uh, sure, H, H2O. That, what if I understood, uh, I'm hearing only the commentary of uh, Lakman Jo who, who translates the Bhagavad Gita in English. Actually it's a commentary coming from the, uh, the California every uh, Saturday. If I understood, my apologies, I'm not an authority, or I'm just trying to learn. It is just more you go inside, better you know what you are. It is not that you see somebody doing good deeds, somebody is doing bad deeds, some, somebody. Those things will always happen. That's what this whole world is. But if you go inside, how to go inside is the whole yoga process. So in this eighth uh, shaloka, if I understood, Prabhupada is one side, I uh, trying to read from different uh, things, is, is, is just uh, w what they said in that, it just uh, focusing on your breathing. And if that breathing is the soul energy and now everything manipulates a human whole thing is where we are heading to. I think what you said is correctly that everything you whatever you do whatever you do but ma major point is go inside because you have got yama you have got niyama you have got pratyahara you have got pranayama you have got dharma you have got da dhyana you have got samadhi and you have got moksha these eight steps you go through but finally is go inside I, I aspire how to learn to go inside. That is why I more more and more interest to listen. Sorry, go ahead. My, okay, so my this is what we'll do. We will. I'll, I'll finish my thought, and then we will. We will uh, today. Obviously, we won't be able to read. So the way we we do the class that way, we have a good flow. That after I finish explaining everything, because sometimes what happens is you might have a question. It might get answered when I finish the whole thing anyway, and then we will do the discussion. That way, it kind of. The class remains at, at a good flow. So, but I will I'm definitely sorry, give I'm time. Sorry, no, no, that's fine. Whatever you are bringing in, we have all discussed all those things. See, what it is, is why Bhagavad Gita is so popular. Because in it, everyone has Because mind and intellect are material. material. So what Krishna Bhagavan is saying, you can pick up any mark, all will encompass slowly. Ki koi gyan mein jayega, usko apne aap bhakti mil jayegi. Jo bhakti mein jayega, usko apne aap gyan mil jayega. So, so what you are thinking of is that, you know, yeah, some people like to do that meditative thing. You can reach through that too. And this particular verse is focusing on meditation. I, in the beginning only I said that, Bhagavan ne bola ki, jo bhi tum kaam karo, usme mujhe mat bhulo. And then he explained that what that nahi bhulna means. Means that even at unconscious, uh, subconscious level, sorry, you are soaked in that truth. That is what he's saying. And then you take out some time during the day to do exactly what you said. And that is that this verse is focused on. But what he was, I was, my thought process over here, I was bringing Nikhila Nanji's thing. Then when he said that, when you remember, remember what the true meaning of God is and not some, um, what you say, my own idea about God, which may be wrong and it will not give me the results. That's what he's trying to say. That a good understanding, a real understanding of God, you can learn from Shastras, from you know wise people. And that's what, because God is not just, some people might think God is, you know, in this image or God is at this place, but God is much beyond that. It's not just in one particular time or one particular image. Or some people, if they, when Krishna Bhagwan says, come to me, bow down to me, 
and some naive people say why krishna is so egocentric that he's saying mere koi bow down karo mere koi karo hey he's not talking about krishna as a body for god's sake he's not krishna as a soul <laughs> okay soul of everybody so, yes inside. and that soul is and when we as we go in the chapters of of bhagavad gita he's going to make it very clear and we did katopnishad that the same you know soul is within us you know it's like a space you cannot cut the space no, it, it but it is with am brahmasmi it starts with am brahma and the manifestation exactly of so we have a, we the people who have come long enough they have this understanding in the class of what exactly what you're saying we have discussed it many times and then coming back to this particular chapter you know we already learned that arjuna asked the six questions right those were six aspects of god inside outside both and as we are going to go into taitriya it is exactly same thing whether inside world or outside world it is the same that kind of understanding so to help us to do this this anuchintayan the correct way okay this the next verse bhagwan gives pointers so we will be doing that next time kavi purana manushati saram he will give you you know many different pointers what you can meditate upon to achieve this this goal so, doesn't it say also that nothing is good or bad but thinking makes so of course i mean in in the world you know you might think that something is good and the other might be totally bad <laughs> right Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt you, but this is my you know, ignorance. No, no, no. That's okay. That's okay. No problem. That's the whole. The class is, you know, we want people to discuss and all, definitely. But anybody else has any comment or question or uh, want to add anything to this verse? We will do. We'll read com- Swami Ji's commentary next week. You know this one. But uh, in the whole context of what we have done. Sheila ji you have something no okay all right any other thing uh, tej ji before we move on thank you very much thanks a lot i have a meeting starting in next 2 3 minutes but i'm i try to reach it took me parking a little time but you know next time i'll be in time no no problem thanks. at all and i'm i, I what yes, if you yes, i know you yes, are you are working what you are doing thanks what you are doing to awaken all of us and you are doing next we good job Thank you, thank you. My sincere namaste to all of you. Next week we'll meet again. Okay. Yes. All right. Hari Om Mama Ji. Ha, bolo, Krishna Ji. Next time you should ask him what does he mean by go inside, go inside, go inside. Yeah, I think that he he's yeah. talking about you know meditating on that self inside. Yeah. That's what he was mentioning. That's what but, I think. And uh, but one should know what. what is the way of going inside to of course not just to, you know yeah. koi bhi path mein aap jao usko puri tarah se samajhna tumhari responsibility samajhna hai samajhna chahiye yeah yeah, yeah. so Ye so that's what it is yes so by the bhakti mark mein koi bolta hai oh bhakti bahut aasan hai no hamari teacher kya bolti thi bhakti mm-hmm. itni aasan nahi hai jitne tum sochte ho because usme jo full surrender chahiye na वो आता yeah. नहीं है इतना जल्दी हम लोग खाली भजन करने से कोई भक्ति नहीं बोलते हैं बिकॉज तभी चैप्टर ट्वेल्व में आया बोला कि तब भगवान ने भक्ति की बात भी नहीं की तब तक जब तक पूरा बता दिया कि कौन है भगवान उसको पूरा विश्व रूप दर्शन दे दिया उसके बाद उसकी भक्ति फूटी है उसके yeah. पहले उसका सरेंडर पूरा नहीं था टोटली गुम होना है उसमें और जब वो जब भी जब हम लोग आएंगे ना चैप्टर ट्वेल्व में तो जब मतलब अर्जुन ने जो प्रार्थना बोली ना एकदम डिफरेंट उसका भाव था एकदम डिफरेंट बिकॉज तभी उसकी भक्ति जागी सो सो लाइक भक्ति मार्ग हो ध्यान मार्ग हो कर्म कर्म योगा हो सब वो आम डूइंग कर्म योगा वो स्वामी जी यूज टू से सम पीपल यू नो दे थिंक द बींग अ वर्कोहलिक इज अ कर्म योगा नॉट एट ऑल यू कैन बी डूइंग 
ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स समथिंग एंड यू इट मे नॉट बी कर्म योग एट ऑल बिकॉज यू आर नॉट ऑफरिंग यू आर नॉट सरेंडरिंग यू आर कॉन्स्टेंटली वरिंग थिंग्स लाइक दैट इज नॉट कर्म योग सो इट्स इफ वी पिक अप अ मार्क इट इज अवर रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी टू फुल्ली अंडरस्टैंड एंड एंड सी इफ आई एम ट्यून टू इट और नॉट बिकॉज इफ आई एम नॉट ट्यून टू इट आई विल इफ आई कॉपी समबडी वी हैव डिस्कस्ड इन द क्लास समबडी इज वही भक्ति और ये तो बड़ा सिंपल लग रहा है मैं भी यही करूँ तुम्हारा मन वैसा नहीं होगा तो तुम कैसे करोगे राइट सो वो आपने जो बोला कि वो एक जरूरी बात है we can't go only on words yeah. no we cannot we have to understand it at the from you know very yeah. depth of it depth of it and you have to understand the whole us marg mein kya kathinaiyan aati hain usko kaise paar karna all that you know that's why they say that uh, you know it the um, shastras are like gps <laughs> it tells you how to go where to go you know that's true yeah yeah true ओके समन क्लोज भगवत गीता है सर्वधर्मा परीत्यज मेक शरण व्रज अहम तापेभ्य मोक्ष इक्षा माशु हरि ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओम विल गो टू तैश्रिया